I don't know which one is scarier, the real life situation that we all have been in in the past eight months, or the Celtic tradition that is now celebrated as Halloween. In any case, Octa scares the daylight out of most pianists I know, including myself. Let's take a look at it in this episode. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. I'm your host, Ferdi Talan. When you play a series of octaves, or any two note interval for that matter, essentially there are two things that need to happen. First, one of the notes has to be released much sooner, and the second, you have to allow your hand to go back to neutral after each and every octave. When you look at the natural resting position of the hands, the pinky and the thumb are not on a straight line, but on a diagonal in relation to each other. When you are in front of your body, the pinky should be more inside the keyboard. This may change as you move up and down the register, but the relationship of the pinky and the thumb remain unchanged. This is called twisting. You are creating a break in your wrist and forcing the hand to stay in an awkward position. Many times this causes pain and discomfort, especially if held for a long extended time. In order to move freely, you need to keep your palm supple. To achieve this, release the thumb as soon as the sound happens. You can also think about playing the thumb staccato but finish the movement and let the thumb come back to its natural resting position. Playing a series of octaves is much less like chopping and much more like bouncing. If you keep stretching without neutralizing after every octave, you're practically hovering, minimizing contact with the keyboard. And you need this constant contact for maximum control and security. Think that the keys are propelling you to the next octave. So it's this. And you let it kind of come back to to the pinky and let it free. Not every octave in a series of octaves is active. Some happens because of another. If you forget, refer again to dribbling a ball or skipping stone on the water. If I make this all active, first it would sound ugly. Number two, it would be impossible to play and you will get hurt at some time. So in order to make this fluid, I play with one, with one hand and see where you want the inflections to be. So what I just did was, right? You could do it so many ways. You could do it, uh, um, so. is not good for your health or for the ear. So let's just say we take the first one. I as if. So they fall into an umbrella. Virtuosity is all about the efficiency of movement. Sometimes going from the white key to a black key can feel like a huge climb, but you could actually make them much closer in distance. 
if you play the white key on the up with the wrist higher, and if you play the black keys on the down with the wrist lower, practically you have shortened the distance between the two. So I'm going from here to here. Even if I do it with the same finger, I could do and make the distance closer because this will feel like a climb. It's far, but if you do, then that's close. If you remember this and apply it when practicing octaves, soon enough, you and your body will start discovering new things. The result may not be instant, especially if you have been used to playing a certain way for a long extended period of time. There will be some adjustment and periods of discomfort. The key is to be able to tell the difference between what is not working and what you're not used to or a foreign feeling because the latter can lead to more discoveries if you can have the patience and keep at it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you get something out of this and can apply it to your daily practice. I will see you next time.